What's up, folks? Welcome back to the Foundations of Craftsman Kit Building. Um, yeah, 101, Crash Course, whatever you want to call it. Make sure, as usual, to subscribe and hit that bell button. That way you can always get our latest updates. We are working on the next step. As I said, this subscribe button is going to look really bad by the time we're done with this whole series as we paint and do whatever we want to over it. These are HydraCal walls, everybody. Yes, they are the white HydraCal walls. I've painted them black because I paint all my castings black when I work with them, whether they're HydraCal or the these kind, the uh, whatever you want to call them, resin castings. And I'll show you why. So we're going to only do, I mean, these are the same principles. All these walls are the same. So we're going to paint one wall for you tonight, show you how I do it. You can apply these to all four walls. If I did all four walls, this would be a three hour video. We're just going to do one wall and you can apply these same principles to all four of your walls. So the one thing that you want to notice with these walls is there's your lintels or whatever you call them, your beams, lintels. I think they're lintels um, for the brick structure. These are going to be a different color than the brick. You also have your stone foundation. We're going to paint that a different color as well. So the colors we're going to use for the brick part. Obviously, we're going to use a red brick. And for the stone part, we're going to use this gray clouds. I already have some of it mixed up in my palette over here. I'm just going to squirt a little extra in. Come on. Near the end of the bottle. And then I'm going to use my post-it because this palette is destroyed for my brick paint. Okay. I'm going to get my brushes ready over here. <clears throat> now, the easiest part about this is because it's black, and this is why I prime my walls black and not a white color or a lighter color, because now I will not have any annoying white blotches showing through. If I primed it white, you could still have white showing through. And I feel like when you get a good base color of uh, brick or whatever you're doing, whether you're painting a resin casting, a metal part, or a hydrocal casting, once it's done with black, you don't necessarily have to worry as much about that um, that white showing through. You know, you always get a weird white blotch that shows through. Uh, and I also think it gives a little bit different of a color to the brick when, or anything, when it's done. I I honestly feel like it gives my structures a richer, more realistic color. Just my opinion. But we're going to paint these all in the same direction. All the bricks, that is. Be careful just to make a straight line there along the foundation edge. Yeah, I just like the way that the black background for the paint makes the paint look especially for structures not all will but there's plenty of other hydrocal videos from other great modelers so i'm just showing you how i do it not that i'm a great modeler that's not what i'm trying to say i'm just showing you a different way to do it <clears throat> and because i'm using uh what am I using? The Coles paint, which is kind of a thin paint. Um, I might have to hit this very light a second time. And when I say very light, it's almost my second coat will almost just be a dry brushing. And one thing I realized, the disadvantage of live video, everybody. not live, but recording, is I should have done those window sills quick. So before I get to those window sills, <clears throat> get a different brush. I'm going to paint my window sills with a khaki color. So this color I'm using now is just um, Craftsmart khaki or suede. I'm sorry, it's called suede for anyone being extremely particular. 
because if I do light to dark, it's much easier to cover than going dark to light. So we're just going to quickly and neatly paint this window ledge. And I'm going to get a little bit on the brick. That's okay. We're going to go back over it again. Uh, and that's why I stopped to do my brick color. I would advise to do this first. But you know how we are. Okay, I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and then also this inside edge, hopefully I just didn't get my big fat head in the way. This inside edge of the window, I'm going to just do the same thing. And as I see the brick is drying, I'm definitely going to use a second coat of the brick red. I'm not going to paint the back of the hydrocal um, where the windows are, where it's black back here, because we're going to black out the windows, and that is part of the blacking out process. Rather than using construction paper or whatever to black out my windows, I'm just going to use the background of the hydrocal, the back of the hydrocal, to black out the windows. So, I'm just going to touch up this ledge real quick. Okay, I'm zoom in just a hair. Okay, there we go. All right, back to the brick. You can see the brick's kind of dark right now. Um, it's okay. I promise. It's, everything's going to be okay. I'm already, I can already hear the comments on this YouTube video. Why would you paint it black? You will see why, and I promise you, it won't look as bad as you think it will. <clears throat> so, just gonna go around this window real quick. Steady hand, steady does it. Same thing on this last part that needs one first coat. Okay. There we go. Oops, got a little on my windowsill. And that's okay. Wrong brush. We can use that one. All right, so now I'm going to quickly do the top ledge while that brick dries. <clears throat> okay. And then I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer and we're going to be right back. All right, we're drying this with my beautiful, beautiful hair dryer. Beauty for life. Beauty for life. All right, back to work. Quickly drying this up real quick. 
<clears throat> and we're going to do one more coat of the brick red. And this time we're going to put it on a little quicker and a little thinner. So almost like a dry brush, but a little wetter than a dry brush. It's like a medium brush. What would you call it? It's a moist brushing. Ugh, that's a terrible sounding term. We're just going to quickly moist brush this. All right. Brings out that color a little bit more. But I like the darker color that this created. Obviously, if you're using a lighter colored primer, or a brick colored primer, or a primer that's similar to your structure's color, then you're going to get different results. Um, we've had a couple users express this to us as well, and we believe the same thing, that there's no one way to do this, and there's obviously some very wrong ways to do this, but there's also a bunch of right ways to do things. Um, not one right way. So we're just showing you a different option. Okay. So hit down here real quick. Get that tricky part right there and around the window. That little dot right on that corner of that windowsill is bothering me. So I'm going to hit that with a little bit more of the suede paint before we're done. Touch that up and then uh, move on. Okay. I'm happy with that brick color right there. I'm going to touch up that little spot on the windowsill there and there. And then um, we're going to do the top wedge again. And then we're going to move on to our stone. And this is not my first... I mean, I'm sorry. This is not my last coating on these bricks. So once this is dry, and before you do the mortar, I'm going to come back through and do a few bricks of a different color. I only need a tiny little bit right now. So, touch up that. And I'm gonna get this little, well, that's a brush, that's a bristle for my brush. Stuck in the wall, there we go. Touch up. Oh, we got a stray hair, everyone. Hang on, we gotta trim this stray hair. Look at that. We got a stray hair. All right. Snip. Okay. Touch that up there. Okay. Last step is to do the foundation. So foundation, we're just going to use our gray. I think, I, I think this was called gray clouds or something. And uh, same basic thing. Just the base coat of the bottom color. The stones for the foundation, we're going to come back through and paint separate colors. Which will add a little bit of variation in grays to the structure. Because again, just like your bricks, they wouldn't all be the same color unless they are painted. But we want it to look like real stone. I'm just going to wrap it around the edge just barely so we don't get any odd colors showing through. Okay, we're going to hit this with the hairdryer one more time. And then I'm going to start painting a few bricks of different colors. All right, now we're ready to do the brick, different colors of brick. So this is really kind of fun because you get to have some creativity with it. I'm going to use, where'd I put it? Where'd I put it? Where'd I put it? I squirted it out and I put it back up. All right, I'm going to use some barn wood. Trust me on this. Focus. 
Okay, I'm going to use some barn wood. I'm going to use some iron oxide brown. And I'm going to use some... I have another brick red that I did not put out yet. Uh, same one. Yeah, we'll go with this. Some burnt umber. We'll do that. We're going to wing it. All right. So I'm going to squirt these three colors out. And I'm going to use a toothpick. Toothpick. And um, I'm just going to pick some bricks randomly and paint them different colors. By just going like this. Picking a random brick. And hitting it with a different color. I'm going to get a couple toothpicks actually. Because I'm going to use one for each color. Okay. Get my dark brown. I mean, and you can you can easily overdo this. So don't go too crazy. Or else it'll just look ridiculous. But just pick some random bricks. And uh, add some variation. To your brick colors. You don't need a lot of paint. You're just kind of dabbing it on to the brick. You're not really, you don't want to drag it across the brick. <clears throat> You just want to gently cover it because if you drag it, you run the risk of pulling the paint off of the hydrocal and ruining all the work you've put on up to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full more of these bricks and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so that's the end result of picking just some random bricks, a few different colors. It adds some variation to it. It's kind of, might be harder to see in this light, but it's there. Uh, you know, I don't do a lot of bricks. I just pick a few. Um, Cause once you put your mortar on too, you will uh, also add a little bit more variation. I'm gonna do a few more here just because I can't stop. Can't stop, can't stop. I'm addicted to it. There's a couple spots I want to hit up real quick. A couple spots that need some attention. Okay, there we go. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is get a different color for these other stones. And that will be a... My barn wood that I was talking about earlier that I did not use on any of these bricks. I'm going to use my barn wood. I'm going to pull a little bit out there. I'm also going to use... What's another good one to use here? I'm winging it, guys. Can't you tell? I'm going to use mushroom from Full Cart. Just two colors because then we'll actually have three with the base color that's already down. Uh-oh. We might not use mushroom tonight. There we go. All right. She came out thick, boys. All right. Next is to do these stones. All right. This is a long one tonight. I apologize compared to these other ones. Okay. So we're just going to pick a few stones kind of at random. Like so. Paint them up. 
you don't want to pick something that's like just crazy but uh you do want something that gives a little bit of variation and uh the other stone color i'm going to use here you'll see in a second um back on camera brett the other stone color is uh one that I'm not going to use on every stone or every block, sorry, but it'll be one that kind of is a sandstone color, which these are kind of limestone y, and then I'm just going to pick one that's just completely a little bit different. Not completely, but just a little more. brown you'd say because there are some foundations or some stones that are mined or milled or whatever the hell you call it quarried uh especially in my region you would get some sandstone for sure so we'll just do that get this side of it Here we go. Paint it up. Okay. I think I'm going to do this last stone down here too. Um, while we're at it. We'll do that one a darker color. Or we'll mix one. How about we mix one up? We'll mix some gray and some of that mushroom that I had. Just for a third color. Or technically a fourth color. Yeah, that'll be cool. Okay. There we go. Now we have four colors on our foundation. We're going to leave it at that. And the cool thing about mixing random colors is they never have to match every time. Because each time you would end up having slightly different stones so it's okay if they don't match every single time so we're going to hit this with the hair dryer and then we're going to come back and do our mortar and then that is going to be a wrap for this video all right everyone now we're going to do our mortar so there's a bunch of ways to do mortar i'm not going to say any of them are wrong i'm just going to show you the one that i am comfortable with and the one that i use for my bricks i'm not used i've used other types of mortar and other methods but Today, I'm going to show you something different or something that I do. All right, enough rambling, Brett. Let's get on with the show. Damn. All right, I'm using chalk to do my mortar. So I'm going to get my chalk brush, get my white chalks right here, white ground up pigments. Sorry, we're going to get someone that's asking us, what's your chalks? It's pigments. And I just brush it in like so. And it sticks into my brick texture. Some places are going to be thicker or more mortary, mortary. They're mortary. And some places won't be. It's okay. And mortar doesn't always have to be uniform because it's not in real life. Okay. So I got that part done. Then I just take a towel. And wipe it away from the face of the bricks. So it's stuck down in the crevices. But it's not on the face of the bricks. And that's it. That's how I do my mortar. There's plenty of other ways to do mortar. But that's how I do mine. And I'm going to touch a couple places up. Because maybe it doesn't stick quite the way you want it the first time. That's fine. There we are. That's how I do the mortar. And while we're at it on this long ass video, I'm going to put the finishing touch on my 
stone on the bottom as well. Same thing, I'm just going to get some chalks, pastels, or whatever you want to call them, pigments. Just brush them on. I'm going to first put my black on first. Rub it on nice and evenly, kind of. And I'm going to get a gray and do a gray next. And yeah, I'm kind of weathering this before it goes on to the, before we're assembling, I mean, but uh, that's okay. Save some stuff for later. Save some stuff for later. All right, and the same thing, I'm washing the front of the stones off with my towel because it fills in the crevices of the block with a darker look. So there you go. That's how I do my walls in half an hour. Now I, you can see why I didn't want to do each one. Because I'd have been doing it for another two hours. So we're going to do the other ones here off the camera. That's how I do each wall. And that's how I'm going to do the rest of them. And you can see also when you add the mortar, it brings out those darker bricks that I did. and makes them pop a little more from the background brick color. So hope you enjoyed this wall tutorial for the Hydrocal walls. Forgot I, was, I talked so much, I forgot what I was talking about. So that's it for tonight. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell button, give us a thumbs up on this video if you thought that this was helpful. Hopefully, you guys learned a little something, maybe a little bit different technique too. So have a great one. Check back again for the next step. Hopefully, by the end of this week.